What's up, gang? Carolina Jackpot time checking in. It is time for our week number nine. Picks and predictions against the spread. Let's see what we can do this week. Week number eight was uh, like kissing your sister. We went 10 and 10 against the spread with the 20 games that were picked. So we're going to try to better that mark this week. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be easy because there are some tough ones to pick this week. I mean, some really tough ones. We can uh, pull out more wins than losses in this one. It's gonna be uh, gonna be good. All right, <clears throat> uh, Stanford on the road at Oregon State, which is a Thursday night game. Uh, I'm gonna pick Stanford to cover the spread in this game. Um, Oregon State is just a bad team. They have one win this year, um, and that was against Portland State by three points. Uh, they did come close against Colorado their last time out. It was the only three-point loss, but the majority of their games have been blowouts. Um, they're just not very good at all. Do y'all remember, uh, remember when Oregon State used to be good? Uh, yeah, me neither. Stanford covers the spread here, the number 20-ranked Cardinal role in this game against the Beavers. Uh, getting into Saturday's games <coughs> uh, in just a minute. This is actually a Friday night game. I'm going to jump ahead of myself. Florida State is on the road at Boston College. Uh, they are a two-and-a-half point favorite uh, against Boston College. I really don't know why. Um, this is a must-win game for Florida State if they want to make a bowl. Uh, they're two and four right now. Um, they've got uh, a game coming up down the road against Clemson that's going to be a sure loss. Um, they've got uh, games against Syracuse, uh, Delaware State. Uh, they got a road game against Florida Gators, which is, you know, their rivalry game. Which they're probably going to lose that one this year. Um, things just don't look good for them. If they don't win this game, they're probably not going to make a bowl. And uh, I don't think they're going to win this game. Boston College has been playing a lot better lately. They've been really getting some good quarterback play and uh, play from their running backs. They won last week on the road at Virginia, 41-10, to 10, in a game that I figured they would lose. Uh, because Virginia was looking so much better, uh, but they just absolutely blew them out of the water. <clears throat> last time uh, these two teams hooked up uh, in uh, Boston two years ago, it was uh, on a Friday night also, and Florida State won that game 14 to nothing. Uh, against the Boston College team that was much worse than this year's team with a team that was much better. Um, so if the, they have a history of kind of playing close games in Boston, and uh, I think that the uh, Eagles are going to cover the spread here and win the game against the Seminoles and send them to 2-5. and five. They're really in a tailspin. Oklahoma State uh, on the road at West Virginia. Um, this game's got upset written all over it. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, Mountaineers here to cover the spread. Um, you know, I'm kind of looking here to just kind of look at some some common opponents and stuff. And, you know, <clears throat> all signs point to Oklahoma State covering the spread. <clears throat> but for some reason, I just don't think they do it. I think that uh, that's a tough place to play in Morgantown, West Virginia. That, that, is, that place is fired up. Um, and I just it seem like I think they're going to rattle them. I think they're going to rattle them a little bit. And uh, I think West Virginia's going to cover the spread. I'm going to call that them up. Set special. I think they're going to win this game. I'll give them a statement win. Uh, Rutgers on the road at Michigan. Rutgers is a 23 and a half point underdog against Big Blue. Uh, Rutgers, they got a little bit of confidence, though. Uh, you know, they've got two wins in a row right now. Uh, you know, a win against Illinois in conference and a win against Purdue. <coughs> uh, Michigan absolutely blown out uh, last Saturday night against Penn State. Um, and if you'll look at uh, what they've done this year, they've kind of, uh, you know, really not played their best against some of these mediocre teams that they've played, especially at home. Uh, this is no exception. Uh, I'm not going to call an upset special here. I don't think the Scarlet Knights are going to win in the big house, but I think they'll keep it closer than 23 and a half. Look for this to be about a 20-point game and uh, the Scarlet Knights to cover the spread in a loss. 
Arkansas on the road, uh, Ole Miss. Um, you know, you can look at this one. They're three and a half point favorites at home. Ole Miss is. The thing about them, uh, they have an impressive conference win. Uh, you know, they won by 22 points against Vanderbilt. Um, I'm still looking for Arkansas's conference win because they don't have one. Uh, Ole Miss has a bad run defense. They gave up like 250 something yards to Darius Geist last week. That's Arkansas's strength, their running game. So uh, that could be a problem. Also, it could be a problem. Uh, Ole Miss's quarterback, Shea Patterson, got hurt last week, hurt his knee against uh, LSU. But uh, I, just, I just don't think it's going to matter against Arkansas. I really don't. Though their backup hasn't taken hardly any snaps at all. Uh, I think Patterson will, will end up playing in this game. And uh, Ole Miss will win. They'll cover the spread. Arkansas is just bad, bad, bad. And um, Ole Miss, you know, for the, even though they you know, really don't have a lot to play for, they've still uh, looked respectable in some of these games. Uh, I'm going to call them to win this game and cover the spread. Miami uh, on the road. Uh, at UNC, uh, Matt, cover the spread. What I tell you last week, UNC, not picking them again all year long. Uh, they really let me down last week. They were absolutely annihilated uh, against Virginia Tech, <clears throat> and a team that, <clears throat> excuse me, hadn't really shown up on offense all year. Um, Miami, they're looking for they're looking for a win that's a, that they can hang their hat on as far as being some kind of impressive win. Their, yeah, their wins this year have not been – they haven't been impressive. They won Florida State with a four-point win. Uh, they won one-point come from behind win against Georgia Tech at home. And then, of course, the eight-point win against Syracuse this past weekend. Uh, they need a good win, a good solid win against somebody. And uh, what better opponent to do against – Hurricanes cover the spread here against UNC. <clears throat> they send uh, the uh, Tar Heels to what? One and seven? One and eight? Who knows? I'm not even keeping track anymore. Wake Forest, that's a home game with Louisville. They are three point underdogs against the Cardinal at home. <clears throat> Wake Forest started off strong, started off 4-0. They've since lost three in a row. Uh, you know, they lost to uh, Florida State, lost to uh, Clemson, and then lost last time out last week to uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, I told you Georgia Tech was going to cover the spread in that game, and they did. Wake just struggles against the upper half of the ACC. They just do. Uh, they just don't perform that well uh, against the good teams in that conference. And this is going to be no exception. Um it's, uh, you know, a home game for Wake Forest, but, I mean, they don't really have – this is one of those teams that really doesn't have a big home field advantage. And they got a, a you know, a 30,000-seat stadium that they rarely fill. Uh, it'll probably be pretty full for this game uh, of Louisville fans. I just – I think they're going to cover the spread here. You know, they won on the road at Florida State last weekend, and uh, I look for them to uh, – Cover the spread here and uh, continue to improve. Um, I think they're five and three right now. Should go to six and three after this win that they will get on Saturday against Wake Forest. Uh, NC State on the road at Notre Dame. Uh, the Irish are seven and a half point favorites. I'm going to pick them to cover the spread here. You know, I would really like to to pick NC State here. You know, they're one of the uh, the better stories of this season, as you know, a lot of people thought they were going to be. Um, the thing about it is, though, Notre Dame hasn't just been beating people; they've been destroying people, uh, and that's with their quarterback Brandon Wimbush being healthy some of the time, and some of the time not. Um, you know, they they have perhaps the the country's best loss this year, a one point loss at home against Georgia in the second week of the season. They destroyed Michigan State, which has turned out to be a pretty good football team uh, on the road, like 38-18. Um, they destroyed USC this past Saturday night. That game was never in doubt. It was like 49-14. to I know USC's been a little bit up and down, but you know I, that, they were only a four-point favorite in that game. I never really thought that would be 
uh, a really good game. NC State is is a solid team. They're not. They're very good. They are very good, but they're not elite. They are not elite. They did. They they lack a couple of playmakers. You know, they they have a, a solid quarterback. He's he doesn't make a lot of mistakes, but he's not an elite quarterback. Uh, Jalen Samuels, who's a do everything type player, they've got. He's he's uh, he's an elite type player, but uh, you know that's that's really you know the the, the meat and potatoes of their offense. And I have a lot after that. Uh, NC State's a, they're they're a nine and three team. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think they're going to win this one. They've they've dropped a game already this year. They lo- dropped game one to my Gamecocks. Uh, this is going to be their second loss of the year. And I think they got a loss coming against Clemson that they should win out the rest of their games. Um, they got a game against Boston College, which could be tricky. You know, they've looked pretty good. Um, but they should finish out 9-3 and three, um, and uh, land themselves in the best bowl that they've been in in years. So they should be proud of that. I do think the Irish are going to cover the spread here. Um, you know, don't rule out an upset special on this one, but I just don't see it happening. Notre Dame covers the spread and rolls on. Uh, Notre Dame's one of those teams they're going to throw. They're going to throw a monkey wrench into this playoff stuff. Uh, Georgia on the – well, not on the road. <laughs> neutral site game against uh, Florida. Evermont Field in Jacksonville. The uh, – what, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party or whatever they call it thing. Uh, they are 14-point favorites. Against Florida, um, t- Georgia's going to cover the spread here. Georgia's going to Georgia's going to blow Florida out of the water. Uh, this is the Kirby Smart effect. Uh, uh, Mark Ripped with this team would have uh, gone out this coming Saturday and lost this game. That's the Kirby Smart effect. Kirby Smart's got this team ready to play these games. Uh, they're more disciplined now. They're tougher and uh, they're just better and just seem better coached. And more disciplined, uh, I, I, they're going to win this game by four scores. I'm just, I'm just going to call that one right now. Florida doesn't even pose a challenge. Uh, the problem with Florida, they can't score. Uh, they can't score. If they can't score, that means that their their defense is going to be on the field all the time. And uh, I don't see them stopping that running attack. Uh, I don't see them uh, being able to shut down. Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle or shut down Jake Fromm. And this kid, when he needs to throw the ball, he gets it where it needs to go. Now, he don't throw it a whole heck of a lot, but uh, when he does, it's pretty accurate. Um, Georgia's going to roll in this game. Uh, I'm going to set up a game next weekend after that against my Gamecocks. And I'm going to go on ahead and tell you this right now, that my Gamecocks in Athens will give them a stiffer challenge than Florida's going to give them this Saturday in Jacksonville. Georgia rolls in this game and uh, eases the hurt of uh, some of those uh, disappointments that they felt in that game the past few years. Final part of uh, part number one of the picks and predictions, TCU on the road at Iowa State. They're six and a half point favorites. I'm going to call for the Cyclones in this one to cover the spread. And and I had to go back and forth on this one. Uh, Iowa State is not elite. Um, but I mean, they've been beat. They beat elite teams. I mean, they they upset um, Oklahoma on the road well, with a backup quarterback starting his first game. Uh, their defense, you know, they haven't shut people down totally, but they've been serviceable. Um, th- this is my pick. This is my uh, upset alert two. Uh, the Oklahoma State West Virginia. That's upset alert one. This is upset alert two. Look for this one to be much closer than advertised. If they do not win this game, it is going to be very close. It's going to be very close right here. TCU, is they're a good team, but if you look at their schedule and some of the teams that they've they beat, they, they really haven't beaten anybody. They haven't beaten anybody that's really of any substance uh, as yet. Um so you know, I'm I'm not gonna say that I don't believe in them, but I just it's it's hard for me to put my eggs in the TCU basket when I look at their schedule and uh, who they've faced so far. All right, guys, that is the end of part number one of my picks and predictions. Part number two will be coming up next 
I'll see y'all later. Peace, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks.